Hi, I'm Alexi, welcome to Alexis Guitars and welcome to part one of my Great Guitar Build of 2021 Scratch Build. So this is it, I'm finally getting started on my scratch build for this year's contest. I've already posted a very short separate introduction where I introduce myself, talk you through my guitar build experience and let you know what my plans are for this year's guitar build. Thank you so much to everyone that's watched that video, that's liked it, that's commented underneath to wish me good luck or to give me some really helpful advice. I really appreciate it. And also thank you so much to everyone that's subscribed to the channel since watching that video. It really means a lot that so many of you want to follow this build process and see how I get on. So on that note, let's get started. What I want to have achieved by the end of this episode is to get the body blank ready. And because I'm starting completely from scratch, that in itself is a big job. So let me start by talking you through some of the materials I'm going to be using for the body. What I'm going to be using for the main part of the body are these two bits of wood here, which I believe are two bits of Robinia wood. Now these two bits of wood originally came from two separate planks of Robinia wood, which were about a meter and a half long. And I actually used this stuff for my other guitar build last summer, which I've got some videos on, which I'll leave the link to in the description below. Now I bought these from my local hardware store about two years ago, and they were pretty cheap, maybe about 10 euros for each slab. And each slab was about 120 centimeters long. The issue for using these for the body is that they're only about 30 millimeters thick. So I'm gonna to need to have a top on top of this to kind of give it enough thickness. I'm hoping that the guitar by the end of the build is gonna be between 35 and 40 millimeters thick. I'll talk you through what I'm using for the top of the guitar a little bit later in the video because there's enough work to do just on a body blank. Before I do anything with the top, I'm gonna to need to straighten the edges so I can glue them together. And as you can see on this one here, I hope you can see on the camera, there are some ugly knots which I'm gonna to need to work around. I'm hoping that there's enough material when I glue the two bits together that I can work around those knots, but we'll have to see. Now in terms of the guitar I'm building, I did talk about this in the introduction video, but I'll just go over it again in case anyone didn't watch that. I'm basically replicating and improving or upgrading the guitar body I made last summer. I put some images or some b-roll on the screen so you can see what it looks like. That was the second guitar body I ever put together and I'm really happy with it. It looks really cool, but there's a lot that can be improved. I want to round over the curves so that the sides are a lot smoother. And I also want to do some work on the upper and lower cutaways, just change the shape ever so slightly and just kind of improve the overall look. So that's what I'm planning. Now, first of all, before I do any work to the actual body blanks, I need to make a template. Let's get started then. So here you can see my first attempt at the template for my guitar. Now I did this on the computer using some software which I never used before and I'm pretty happy with the result but then what I did was I got the guitar which I'm basically replicating but trying to improve, put it on top and traced around it with a pencil you can see and the shape is quite different. Now there's a few things I like about the new design I did on the computer and there's a few things I like about the original guitar which I've traced out in pencil. So what I like about the original guitar is this upper horn here. I really like that it looks more SG-esque than this rounded, almost stratty kind of, actually it looks more like a lower cutaway of a Telecaster to be honest. Um, so I prefer the kind of, not pointy, but pointier original shape. What I like about the new template I made is this lower horn. I think that is much nicer. I like that it's very flat. You can see that the original kind of goes off a little bit, uh, so it's at a lot more of an angle, but I like this flat lower horn, so I'm going to keep that. The other thing I really like about my template is up here. You can see on the pencil, the original guitar, that it, the upper cutaway ends pretty much at the same point as the lower cutaway. So it's, a lot, it's very SG-esque, which is cool, but I wanted a bit more support from the body, so I've kind of pushed it up a little bit, and that just means that there's more contact with the body, which I prefer. So I updated it and came up with this one here. So as you can see, let me just cut that up. As you can see, I made the upper cutaway, uh, the horn a bit more like a horn, and kept all the things I like, and so this is going to be my body.
So I finished up my template. I'm pretty happy with it. It's this one here. Now this is going to be my master template. I actually ended up making another three based off of this one. And as you can see, well, hopefully you can see on the camera, because this one's got the paper on it, I used this to design where I'm going to be doing my contouring, just to kind of give myself a bit more of an idea of what the finished product is going to look like. So as I said, this is my master template. This is going to be the one I'm going to be using probably to cut out the body of the guitar. But I didn't just stop there. I also made an exact duplicate, just a replica. And this is going to be just in case something goes wrong with the other one. Um, I also wanted one which is exactly the same without uh, the paper on, just the bare wood, because it was a bit easier to manage. I might just keep this one spare for future guitars. The next template I made is this one here. And this one is, I mean, it looks exactly the same, but I'm gonna use this one for the pickup cavities. So this is gonna come in handy a bit later on in the guitar build. And finally, I did one more, and this one looks a bit messier, but this one I'm gonna use for the uh, neck pocket. So that's why I left all of this extra material up here. This is just to align it to the guitar body. And all of this excess material is just so that my router has something steady uh, to sit on as I'm routing out this pocket here. So those are all my templates. What I need to do now is prepare the wood for the body blank. Now I've given this a practice go here on this end just by using a router and a straight edge and it turned out pretty good. It's pretty straight and it's a 90 degree angle so I'm happy with that. I need to go over it with a um, straight edge and some sandpaper just to really plane it out. But that was just a practice run. I'm gonna do it on this side now so I can start gluing the body together. Okay, well I've gone over both edges here with a straight edge and my router, and it's far from perfect. There's still a gap here, so I'm gonna need to flatten this out even more. But this highlighted an issue for me. Basically, I've lost some material uh, from flattening this out. And if I put my template and line up the midpoint of the guitar to the seam, I don't have enough material here. Now, an easy solution would be to move this up, and if I'm trying to avoid these knots here, I could just rotate it like this a little bit, and that's absolutely fine. Now, this wouldn't be an issue in terms of the guitar playability, it's just gonna be an aesthetics thing. And I do wanna challenge myself in this competition, so I was toying with this idea anyway, but because of this, this has kind of pushed me to do it. Basically, I just wanna get a little bit more material to push this down. So I've got these here, which I've taped together at one end just to make it easier to handle. I've got loads of these, but this here is three separate uh, beams. Now, I don't know what wood this is. It's a beautiful dark wood. I'll see if I can get a nice close-up uh, later on. Uh, but the problem is, at this end, I hope you can see on the camera, they're not flat, so they've got these ridges. So I assume this is where some shelves or something used to uh, either sit on or slit into. So that's a bit problematic for me. So what I'm gonna do, because I've got loads of these, I'm gonna get these three, glue them together, and then I need to build a router jig anyway. What I'm planning at this stage is using my router jig to flatten out the top. And then I'm gonna get another three of these, glue them the same way, and glue them on top. And that should give me enough material. And then if I do something like this, and line this up with the midpoint, now you can see I have plenty of material to work with, and that's absolutely fine. So this is gonna be a lot of work for me and it's gonna be a real challenge, but that's great because I'm up for a challenge. I do want to develop my skills in guitar building and I wanna learn new things and I haven't done something like this before. So I'm excited to give it a go. It might be a complete mess that I need to change my plan um, or I might need to get work through a few of these before I actually figure out how to do it properly, but that's no problem. I've got loads of these bits of wood, like I said. All right, let's get to work.
busy. I finally got this straightened up and it's a little bit higher than the rest, but that's fine, I can sort that all out afterwards. The main thing is the sides are straight enough that I can glue and plane these together. I've decided to swap around where I've got these and if I put this here in the middle, then let's line that up. If I put this something like that, then as you can see, sorry about the shadow here, as you can see I avoid all of the knots and I avoid this ugly thing, whatever that is, and it's a bit dark here but you can see I've got enough material for the body. So I'm going to get this glued up. So annoyingly I didn't capture any of that uh, properly on camera, but it went pretty well. I've got this all glued together now, I've only got three of these big clamps so that's all I'm using. Unfortunately I wish I had a few more. But it all went well, I actually had a wet cloth with me this time so I could wipe away the glue, so I actually did learn from my mistake, which is great. And now it's just a waiting game. Okay, it's been 24 hours, time to unclamp this thing and uh, see how it turned out. Seems okay so far. Okay, interesting. So I'm just rubbing my hands up and down this and I can see that at the back here, this piece and this center piece is pretty in a line with each other. I need to smoothen it out ever so slightly. But this piece in the middle is flat, but on the side sticks up a little bit. So either these two are both warped downwards or this one, which is probably more likely, has warped up a little bit. Um, or just naturally was like that and I didn't notice. So I've got a bit of flattening out to do. I don't have time to do that today unfortunately. So I flattened out the body now. I made myself a makeshift router planing jig so I was able to move my router up and down or side by side uh, all the way over this to flatten it out on both sides. Still needs a bit of sanding out or planing to get it completely smooth but I'm happy enough with it for the time being. So it's time to start talking about the top now. So my original plan was to use these two beautiful bits of what I assume is oak. Now I was just given these, I was given a whole pile of them, and I actually used two of them on my previous guitar build for the top. And I really like how it looks, I think it looks really beautiful. I love all of these rays, all of these darker stripes going through it, but I can't really use these unfortunately on this one, even though I wanted to, because you can kind of see it already. Um, up here they're kind of the same thickness, about a centimeter, maybe 11-12 um, millimeters, but this one stays is pretty much flat but this one gets really narrow down here and it's only about nine millimeters here so by the time I flatten it all out and make sure it's all completely flat on both sides I don't know how thick it's going to be maybe seven eight millimeters which isn't thick enough because my body is only about um, just under an inch so two and a half centimeters thick I was really aiming for something like 35 millimeters to 40 millimeters so I don't want anything too thin so I was problem solving here and what I came up with is more pine. So I had these blanks here, um, it was all part of one really long floorboard um, or an outdoor decking board rather. I think it's a Norwegian type of pine, I can't remember the name, if I remember the name I'll uh, put it up on the screen somewhere. So I've got these and I cut three of them to roughly to size, I flattened out the sides so that they can be glued together. Uh, as you can see, there's all of these ridges, and on this side, there's all of these narrower ridges. So once I've glued them all together, I'm then going to use that router jig to sand them all flat, so that there's a nice flat surface area. And I know a pine guitar isn't the most uh, desirable. This is pretty much pine, pine, whatever this mysterious, beautiful stripe is on the back, and then more pine on the top. But I'm going to be using a veneer on top of this anyway, so this isn't going to be the top of the guitar. So I'm going to glue these together and flatten them out. So I've glued this all together, clamped it up. As you can see, I used my trademark far too much glue on the joints trick, but I'm not fussed about all that glue on this one because as you can see, uh, there's all of these ridges in the wood there. So I'm gonna need to wrap this down and flatten it all out anyway. So everything you see on the top here is gonna be uh, routed away and flattened out. So I'm gonna leave this 24 hours and come back to it tomorrow.
so that did not go well, I'm afraid. Here on the edges, it was fine. There's some good contact, and uh, these are stuck together tight over here, and same at the back there. The problem is, I put all of my clamps basically there, as you saw, and I only had one uh, bar going across here in the center clamped down. What I should have done was spread out my clamps evenly across the whole thing, because you can see it here, it's curved up and it's just not a good contact. Well, it's, it's an awful contact. There isn't contact here on the edges. Here on this side, it's fine. But then as it goes to the middle, basically further away from where the clamps were, um, the wood kind of curves up a little bit and it's just a terrible contact. I did a really bad job. So what I'm doing, because I can't do any routing today, what I'm going to do is use my router jig to get rid of this top. So I finally finished with that tedious job. It wasn't fun at all, but it was a successful job. I managed to remove all trace of the top that was on here. Um, I feel like I've gone back to square one, which isn't really fair because it did take a lot of work just to get to this stage. I've lost a little bit of thickness. It's now about 23, 24 millimeters, which isn't drastic. I'm fine with that uh, because I'm gonna stick a top on top of this. And there's also a little chip in here, which I need to either glue down or think how I'm gonna fill that. So some unexpected but some pretty cool news. I was just at my local hardware store or DIY store to try and find some super glue for the super glue and masking tape uh, trick. And as I was leaving, I just thought, let me have a look at what wood they actually have. I was expecting just to find slabs of Douglas fir, but what I ended up finding was slabs of oak, ash, alder. And so I had a look at what uh, took my fancy and I found two beautiful slabs like this of alder. And I found the best, I found the best looking similar two pieces I could find. And yeah, I absolutely love it. It's 22 millimeters thick, so that's perfect for adding the thickness to the guitar body. Um, they're not that wide, so by the time I flatten out or straighten up the edges, I'm probably gonna need three pieces to get it wide enough for the actual guitar body. But that's fine, I've got two of these. So between these two bits, I should have more than enough wood. And I mean, Aldo, that's awesome. I can't believe I didn't know they had that before. I swear I looked, but all I had found previously was Douglas fir, so. Great to know that they have a wider selection for future builds, but I've got some nice, uh, fairly flat, I'm gonna to need to flatten it out a little bit more, but I got some nice slabs, slabs of wood that I can work with now, and I'm gonna get going with the top and speed this whole process up a bit. So this is my new top. I first used a router with a straight edge to get a rough cut and then I used this straight edge here with some um, sandpaper stuck to it just to kind of smoothen it out and it doesn't look that great now because the surface underneath is uneven but it actually is a pretty good has pretty good contact so I'm really happy with that I think I'm ready to get this glued up. So just a quick update, I didn't film much of this because it was just me planing basically or using my hand plane. I'm just trying to flatten this because unfortunately it started to bow and uh, so one side was uh, sticking up in the middle, the other side was sticking up on the sides. Uh, you can kind of see it here. So that's super annoying. So I've been planing as you can see from all the debris here. I've been doing it for ages and I've lost a bit of depth which again I can afford but the issue is it's not really fixing the problem. Um, so I think Unfortunately, I was really trying to avoid this. 
I think I've got no, just simply because of my experience with the tools and what I can achieve, I think I'm going to have to use the router again and just use that jig and just try and flatten it out that way. I'll give it a go. At the very least, only one side needs to be completely flat for the gluing. The other side I can handle once it's all glued together. The main thing is getting the surfaces flat so that the two bits of wood can uh, have a nice contact with each other. Okay, well the gluing in comparison to the previous one was a huge success, I'm really happy. And as you see, I've been able to cut it to something that looks somewhat like a guitar. The rest I'm going to do with my router. Now I know the advice is to cut with a jigsaw or whatever you're using as close to the outline as possible, but I simply don't trust my jigsaw to cut completely 90 degrees. Um, I'm not sure if there's a slight angle, and that's why I don't want to get too close. And also, I don't know if the video really captured it, but you can see from some of the burn marks here, going in corners is pretty tricky with this span saw I've got here, so um, I didn't want to get too close. That just means I need to be as cautious as possible when going around on my router, uh, so that I can avoid as much terror as possible. But for now, here's kind of what my guitar's gonna look like. So a change of scenery for this last bit of a video, but basically the body blank is pretty much done. And I say pretty much done because I, there's still a bit of work to do to it. I need to sand the sides and the front and back to get it all nice smooth surfaces. And there's a little bit of chip out, unfortunately. I did, it was going so well with the, with the routing, but there's just this little bit up here and on the sides there. Now I'll do some close up so you can have a look at it, but basically the bit of chipping up here isn't so much of an issue because I wanted some contouring anyway, and I'm sure I can do something with the sanding um, just to smoothen that out. But there are two chips here at the end on the back, and that is a little bit annoying. There's an easy fix to that. I just basically need to round off uh, the back, the edges here. And that sounds like something I should be doing anyway, but I actually really love guitars that are just a slab of wood. And um, I didn't really intend on having really rounded edges at the back, but I think I'm gonna need to do that. It'll make the guitar more comfortable, um, so it's not a bad thing. It's just not really what I had in mind, but easy fix. So the guitar itself at this stage actually looks completely different to how I envisaged it was gonna be. Now, starting at the back, I expected the body of this guitar to be two pieces of Douglas fir, about three centimeters thick. As you can see, what I ended up doing, and as you saw in the video, was adding this brown strip in the middle, which consists of six individual strips of this beautiful dark brown wood. And I think just adding this strip in the middle at the back just kind of makes the back a little bit more interesting rather than just having the Douglas fir. The other change was, it's not so much a body and a top, it's more like a top with an extra back because this uh, Douglas fir is now about a centimeter and a half, maybe 17 millimeters thick, and the top is about 2.2 centimeter, uh, uh, centimeters thick. So it looks a little bit weird having such a thick top and a thinner body, but what else could I do? You saw the process I went through and this was the best I could hope for. The other change is the top. Now I was expecting to put two bits of oak as the top here, but the pieces I had, uh, although they look great, just weren't thick enough. But luckily I found those two bits of alder from my local DIY store and that makes a really nice top. 
In terms of the overall shape, now this is the third time I've made a guitar body and this is the best it's been. The edges are nice and smooth, I'm really happy with the templates I made. I still need to smoothen it out a little bit more, but I really like the shape and I think this is going to be a cool looking guitar at the end of it. So that brings me on nicely to the next steps. Now the next big thing I need to work on is the guitar neck. Now I've never made a neck before, so I'm really excited to do that. So that's probably what episode two is going to be about. So I'm going to put the body blank aside for now while I work on the neck. So lots of exciting things to come. And I think all that's left to say for part one is if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. And if you enjoyed this video and want to follow this series or interested in the other videos I post, uh, please do consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I've been watching a lot of the other Great Guitar Builder videos and there are some fantastic builds out there. So good luck to everyone else that's in the competition. I'm really enjoying your videos so far. And uh, yeah, till next time. Mm -hmm.